there's going to be an I Am Legend sequel, but how is that possible? Didn't Will Smith's character die? Well, there's actually an alternate ending that literally changes everything. Keep watching to find out how. Expectations were high when the news initially broke that Will Smith would be leading a new movie based on author Richard Matheson's widely influential 1954 novel, I Am Legend. Smith was one of the world's biggest movie stars and in the prime of his career. The hype for the movie translated to strong box office returns, even if Smith himself had higher expectations. The story follows Robert Neville, possibly the last surviving human on Earth after a pandemic has transformed the rest of humanity into what seems like soulless zombies. However, that's where the similarities between the source material and the movie adaptation end. For one thing, the zombies in the original novel weren't ever really zombies in the first place. Matheson repeatedly refers to the fearsome creatures as vampires in his book. They avoid garlic and sunlight as much as possible, nursing an insatiable need to drink blood and possessing a telltale weakness for wooden stakes. Otherwise, they're largely indistinguishable in appearance from normal humans. The chilling description of supernatural beings who retain the intelligence and memories of their former lives is a far cry from the mindless dark seekers of the film. That's with even setting aside the divisive choice to render such creatures in CGI. Directed by Francis Lawrence and written by Mark Protosevich and Akiva Goldsman, I Am Legend portrays Will Smith's version of Neville with more of a focus on typical blockbuster action. In the film, Neville's still a brilliant survivalist, bent on finding a cure for the zombie disease at all costs. Yet the story kicks off with Neville hunting a deer in his flashy Ford Mustang with his trusty canine companion, before coming face to face with a wild pack of lions, long escaped from the Bronx Zoo. Spoiler alert, that's not quite the same tone as the quieter, more cerebral original novel. Adaptations inevitably take artistic license when translating stories to a different medium, as has been the case for decades. Still, it's hard not to wonder if I Am Legend could have remained much more faithful to Matheson's novel. And as it turns out, an alternate ending might have changed everything. The recent news that Will Smith will be making his grand return to the I Am Legend world for a sequel, while exciting, inevitably raised certain questions. Mainly, wouldn't the canonical ending of the original movie make Smith's return a little tricky? The movie follows Robert Neville's desperate attempts to find a cure for the zombie virus while maintaining his sanity in the face of unimaginable loneliness. Please say hello to me. Then there's the unexpected arrival of fellow survivors Anna, played by Alice Braga, and Ethan, played by Charlie Tahan, which raises the stakes for the final stretch of the movie. Inevitably, the appearance of zombies at Neville's door leads to an all-out fight for survival. The intense firefight ends with the three humans trapped in his basement lab, which currently holds a captured zombie patient that Neville has been testing cures on for much of the movie. In the theatrical cut, Neville realizes that the serum is actually working on the Darkseeker. The unstoppable horde of attacking zombies, however, leaves him with little choice. Entrusting the invaluable cure to Anna, Neville picks up a grenade and sacrifices himself in a blaze of glory to give the others a chance to escape and someday save the world. Though a typically heroic climax by the standards of Hollywood, many critics at the time called out this ending. Many argue that it was taking a disappointingly obvious and straightforward approach to such nuanced, thought-provoking source material. Luckily, the home release provided an opportunity to make amends, as the special features included a previously unseen alternate ending that reframed our perceptions of the entire movie. The new ending picks up in the basement lab and sees Neville come to a shocking realization about his supposed enemies. To his amazement, the zombie leader only attacked in order to rescue his mate, the female Darkseeker that Neville essentially kidnapped earlier in the film. With this evidence flipping his and the audience's assumptions of these creatures completely upside down, our hero foregoes any further violence and simply returns the Darkseeker to her people. I'm sorry. <laughs> In this instance, the movie ends with our trio of human survivors all alive. Even more, they are now armed with this game-changing knowledge, escaping from the ruins of Manhattan, and are ready to search for more survivors scattered throughout the world. Needless to say, the alternate ending of I Am Legend brings the adaptation much closer to the original novel, if not in the exact details, then at least in spirit. Readers of Richard Matheson's novel know that his depiction of the vampires served an immensely important purpose. Like the absolute best examples of sci-fi, 
I Am Legend ultimately reveals itself to be a parable about the human condition. Specifically, the main takeaway involves the human inclination towards distrust and suspicion of those historically perceived as others and less than human. Let me save you! Let me save you! After years of viewing the vampires as beasts who need to be cured or, failing that, eradicated completely, Neville is ultimately taken prisoner by the vampires and learns the profound error of his ways. A glimpse of their downright domestic lifestyle proves that these transformed creatures had only ever sought to establish a new society of their own. The monstrous Neville, in their eyes, was always the malevolent legend of myth that kept them awake at night. Well, make that day, since, well, they're vampires and all. This complex and utterly thought-provoking notion forces readers to reevaluate worldviews and inherent biases. Matheson intentionally uses such an exaggerated cautionary tale to teach valuable lessons that ought to be applied in everyday life. Although the much more conventional ending of the film adaptation fails to reach the exact same levels of profundity, the alternate ending at least steers much closer to the original intent behind the classic story.